Hello everyone, Steph Williams the Magic Maker here for another Hobby Hoppers project. Today I'm sharing the sweet card I made using a bunch of amazing products from the latest Lawn Fawn release that I grabbed from Hobby Hoppers. Today's card is a Swish and Pop surprise card, so I love using the Swish and Pop die to bring out an object that was hidden, but I also love using it in a way where the Swish and Pop piece moves out of the way to reveal something that's stationary. So here's a peek at the card we're making today. It turned out so cute and I'm so excited to show you how to make it. So to get started, I'm using my large stitched rectangle and because Lawn Fawn, they're all geniuses there, they're designed to match all the other large stitched things perfectly. So they're a perfect match for my new Tropical Leaves background die. So I'm cutting two of those background dies, one from like a medium green cardstock and one from a dark green. I'm also cutting two white pieces of cardstock with my stitched rectangle. Here I am just showing the order in which they will be on my card front. This card does have a lot going on, but with these steps, it should be much easier for you to make it than for me because I was a bit of a scatterbrain and I get so excited when I make these cards, I tend to skip steps. But thanks to editing videos, it's going to be in the perfect order for you to do this. As you can see, I have cut a rectangle out of the center of this, and this is so that we can see all the way through to the back piece that's going to be stuck onto my card base. And that white frame is also going to support my leaves a little bit better. This die is beautiful, but it's also very um, intricate and detailed. It's got so many little pieces. And because I'm adding dimension today, I really want to make sure all of those leaves are supported from behind so that they don't get bent. To start adding some dimension and some color to all of this, I'm using my peacock feathers to brush some ink onto my lighter green cardstock. I have been loving the way this looks in all the Lawn Fawn videos, and so I thought I would give it a go here too. It just breaks up that solid green. I'm doing the same with my dark green cardstock, but instead I'm using some Dusty Concord on that one. From some matching cardstock, I cut some of my Tropical Leaves dies. I feel like these are also a must. I know I've said that about a few things from this release, but these are so much fun and I love how big they are and I love how I've been able to use them in this card to hide something. I'm just really enjoying playing with them. Now that they're all inked up, I'm going to be using some of my gold watercolor pigment. Today I'm using my yellow gold and I'm going to be sprinkling that over the top. Now for my white background and my white frame, I'm going to be using some of my pearl watercolor pigments i think that's what these ones are or jewel these ones are jewel i think it's the pearl ones that i still want i want all of them they're all so pretty <laughs> i'm just going to do a couple of flicks of each color just for a really subtle rainbow once that was all dry it was then time to start assembling my frame so I'm going to be gluing down my dark green cardstock onto my white frame first. Once that was stuck down, I then glued my light green frame down onto my dark green one, making sure that I had flipped it the other way so that they don't layer perfectly on top of each other and so that we see both layers of leaves. Now here's where things, <laughs> at least in my mind, start to get a little bit tricky because I'm always trying to get my head around this swish and pop die. So the first thing I've done here is cut two pieces of green cardstock to layer that pulling piece. I like that piece to be nice and thick, so I always do two and glue them together. I've also cut out my little piece that shows that there is a pulling mechanism here, and I've cut that out of the dark green cardstock. I've also, from some acetate, cut the swishing piece that my leaves are going to be glued to, and that is what's going to hide my little critter. I'm flipping over this little arrow piece and instead using the solid back and putting down a little paw instead. I use the die to cut out the little holes from my solid stitched rectangle. And here I am picking where it is going to work best to hide my little character. I keep saying character because I've heard people call it a jaguar or a cheetah. I can't wait to color it in almost completely gray and, 
black and make a panther. I'm just going to keep it to critter or character. So as you can see, I'm marking out where this pulling piece is going to sit so that I can now trim it and also take my frame over to my die cut machine and just cut out that little piece that then reveals the pulling piece. Gosh, I hope that makes sense. I'm terrible at describing this. And this is exactly why I make videos. I feel like I'm much better at showing these things than I am explaining them. So once all the moving pieces were stuck down, I then placed my frame on top and this is where I am measuring out where to cut this little piece off. And there we go. Everything's moving. That's all good. So now it's time to start stamping. And today I'm using the adorable little characters from the Toucan Do It stamp set. To colour in today, I'm using my alcohol markers and as always a mix of Copic markers as well using two shades of each colour per area and simply blending them together. I had a lot of green in this card and I found it a little bit tricky to decide what other colours to go for because my big cat was going to be shades of brown and I didn't know what colours to do, the toucans, beaks and the flowers and everything so I kind of went for blues and purples. I just love these little critters. I have used this Toucan Do It set so many times already and I have just honestly loved this whole new release by Lawn Fawn. It's so dangerous when they bring out a release where almost every single item looks amazing and the release is this big. I still have a few more things to grab and I'll be grabbing them from Hobby Hoppers so don't forget to check them out. It's such a wonderful little online store and Trish always makes sure that it's stocked up so well with the latest Lawn Fawn release. I'll leave you with some music as I finish colouring these in. Now that my colouring and white highlights were done, it was time to stick this cutie in its spot. I'm just using some PVA glue and I'm going to pop her in the centre and then make sure that she fits nicely with the frame around her and with the moving piece being able to cover her. It was then just a matter of playing around with the leaves, sticking them down onto my acetate and just working out what looks best, what angle worked with them how much of that acetate I needed to trim off and whether it all moved nice and smoothly. So 
So like I mentioned before, I often rush these things, especially these cards. I've made a card like this twice now and both times I've made the same mistake. I have made my frame like a little bit too small. So as you can see here, I've got some white cardstock. I did the same rainbow flex on it. I didn't show that because I thought I would just save time. And I've stuck it down so that it sticks out just a little bit more. I wish I had maybe thought about doing this at the beginning and not cutting my frame so thin around the edges. I know I didn't want it to show around the leaves, but I also didn't think about how much the pieces to the moving mechanism actually stick out. And I really wanted to make sure I hid that second brad and the bulk of the acetate. So I just extended that white piece a little bit. Although it bothers me a bit, I feel like when you kind of just glance at this card, you don't really notice that it's there. And if I had done it and made it even on both sides, it wouldn't even be a problem to look at. To give this frame the proper dimension that it needs, I'm using some Kids Adhesive Craft Foam and I've doubled it up so that it's really nice and thick. I've just cut strips and pieces that fit all around the edges on one side, but the side with the moving pieces, I do have to be just a little bit more careful on my placement there. And so you can see me going back and forth and moving it a lot just so that I'm making sure I'm putting this foam in places where it's not going to interfere with it moving up and down. So we almost have like a little pocket in the top of the frame where it can slide through and almost poke out the entire top of the card just so that it's way out of the way and we can see our cute little kitty. At this point my head needed a bit of a break from all those moving pieces and trying to work that out and I thought I needed to get onto my sentiment too. So I've got a pink piece of cardstock and I'm just roughing up the edges with some dusty concord because both of these kind of match the pinks and purples that I had chosen to colour in some of the images. Today I'm using the sentiment, have a wild day. And while I'm here I've got some extra little leaves that I'm going to use to kind of cover up that extra piece of white cardstock that I had to use for my frame. And I'm just colouring them up a little bit with some peacock feathers, just as I had with the frame. Okay, so back to my frame, and here are all those extra leaves that I have just done. I'm going to be sticking them and positioning them around the edges where it kind of hides, I guess, the biggest bits of white frame that you can see behind the leaves. On the left side, with the moving pieces hidden, it's kind of unavoidable, but I thought at least on this side I can hide the most obvious bits of white cardstock. To this adorable little critter, I added some cute little hearts next to her. I thought it would just be a cute addition. I saved one of those extra leaves to stick on my sentiment to cover up the hole on this tag as I won't be tying anything to it today. So now for the super exciting part, all of this is now very quickly going to start coming together. So I'm flipping over my card front and I'm using some PVA glue on all of my foam pieces. Sometimes I use double sided tape for this, but I feel like the PVA glue gives me just enough time. It doesn't dry straight away, especially on foam. So I have a little bit of time to wriggle it around and make sure that my, my card front and my card base are lined up nicely and making sure that nothing is blocking my moving pieces. And if it does, then I can quickly rip it off and stick it back down. I don't quite have that freedom with double sided tape. I feel like it just instantly sticks and will rip things if I need to pull it off. And speaking of double sided tape, this is the time where I'm sticking it on to the very back piece so that I can stick all of this down to my card base. I'm doing this now because I'm going to have my sentiment and those cute other little characters that I've coloured in, they're going to be on some foam squares and have much more dimension and I don't want to squash them. So there we go, I've removed the backing to my double sided tape and I'm now lining the whole thing up on my card base. Let's stick on the last little things and finish off this card. And there we go, everything is stuck on. It's time to move this piece and have a look at how it all turned out. I think you'll agree it turned out pretty cute. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Don't forget to check out Hobby Hoppers. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I am super close to 2,000 subscribers and I would love for you to join us. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.